This must be it. The basement door is weather-worn. The copper nails holding the upholstery in place have turned green from sea air, and there's a knocker shaped like a lion's head. The royal lion, Guillaume's kitten. This knocker will last a lifetime and then some. You knock silently. The upholstery muffles the sound. No response comes from the apartment. I guess no one is in? You feel eyes on you, watching you from the window overlooking the yard. You're pretty sure the owner of the apartment isn't here. It's safish. The leather upholstery is worn and rough against your jaw. You don't hear any movement. In fact, it's oddly silent in the yard around you. No birds chirp. Let's be honest. This isn't what I joined the RCM for, but every day tells you something new about yourself. Apparently, working with the local union boss to get info on an investigation is not something I'm squeamish about. If the Merc Tribunal happens before we solve this, we are looking at casualties. What's one unlocked door compared to that? On the other hand, we could just leave and tell Evrat we opened the door. No one seems to be tailing us to see if we actually did it. Yes, presenting a fabrication is known to get results here and there. You took this task. You make the call. The door is right here. You can just open it and be done with this. Besides, if you never open it, you're never gonna find out what's behind the door. I don't know. You're a pretty good liar. Are you as good an infiltrator as you are a liar? You try to be as silent as you can. It takes a bit of rattling of the handle to loosen the bolt. Finally, the door unlocks with a small clack. Thoughts race through your head. The sound of the key turning still echoes in the yard. Hopefully no one heard. Well, buddy, you opened it. No need to go inside. It would be rude. Good job. Let's go now. I'm sure there's nothing interesting in there. There's nothing else to do than to leave and tell Everard. No conceivable reason for you to intrude on the premises. Only curiosity could account for stepping over that threshold. Maybe there's treasure in there. A white alligator. A fountain of quicksilver. There might be important information in the apartment. I mean, there might. As you hold the open door, you can feel the air moving, a little draft, a whistle. A row of mugs sits on the shelf. Each one depicts a human figure. 
a dark-skinned woman grinning amidst mysterious symbols, a broad-shouldered man shoveling potatoes, and others. A little ring. Though cheerful, the images on the ceramic make you vaguely uncomfortable. There's something disdainful in the way the curves and lines of the bodies were drawn. The images betray a lack of interest in human beings. They are merely unflattering caricatures. The owner of these mugs doesn't like people of other ethnicities very much. This person is unhappy. The lieutenant picks up one of the mugs, then puts it back down with a look of disdain. I'm beginning to feel better about breaking into this man's apartment. Yes, your broken mug friend would feel very much at home here. The same humor, the same mocking lines. There's the missing teen soldier. Whoever lives here might have used the Whirling's container to dump his trash. And now they've drawn the ire of the Union. The plot thickens, as they say. An interesting little clue. Let's see where this goes. Clues have a way of magically connecting to other clues down the road. Perhaps you should break into apartments more often. Who knows? I'm not expecting too much from this clothes in the trash lead either way. It might turn out to be some random local matter, but still, a nice coincidence. You could ask Everard who this person is once you're done here. This is the flag of Rivershaw, the suzerainty. This isn't just one sun, but there are little suns dancing around the big sun. This is the sevenfold sun miracle. It's an optical atmospheric anomaly the first settlers saw. Happens in cold weather. Six small suns around the big one. This complex halo phenomena is how old Rivershaw got its flag. It is but one of the many strange optic atmospheric phenomena of this wondrous archipelago. You're sure you once saw sun dogs in your youth and blue flares. Mm-hmm. The tenant is an old-fashioned guy. By old-fashioned, he means very right wing. The flag doesn't seem to mind. It's just a colorful fabric with a sun sewn onto it. Like all feudal flags, it looks like a children's drawing. Hello, I'm Gary. Very generous of you to help us out, officer. Yellow man. I mean, officer. The lieutenant raises his eyebrows slightly 
and takes out his notebook. Yellow man, interesting. This is something to ask him about, after a little probing first. I'm just waiting for my friend Morel to finish up with his insect traps so we can return to civilization. I like nature, just not this bloody coast. It's mostly drunks and degenerates that come here. Degenerates? This man respects authority too much. To see the truth inscribed upon thine own visage. Pretend thou art a paragon of virtue. I've been tempted on occasion. But someone has to stay strong for Revacol. He pronounces Revacol with a hard K, unlike other people. Serious question time. This man is no innocent. No one is. I like to pronounce it the hard way. The old way. The Vespertine way. The stupid way? He winks at you, trying to relay some hidden message, inviting you to mispronounce it too, perhaps. It's odd. It's a secret right. A very fringe nationalist handshake, probably. Not many Seolites here, or anywhere, other than Seol. I meant no offense, truly. Do you remember how, when we met Measurehead and I said the next races will be a really good one? Well, this is that racist. Hey, man. All I meant was there are not many Seolites around here. I'm just stating a fact. No. No problem at all. Sounds like some conspiracy topic. You might be able to discuss it with him when the lieutenant isn't here. If you can remember it. Return without the lieutenant. For this, your balance organ thinks it's a waste of time. Your gut feeling tells you it'd be interesting. My mug? Why would you think that? His eyes widen at the sight of the mug. He's seen it before, all right. How do you mean? Forgive me, officer, but we've only just met. He is trying to avoid lying to you outright, in case you really have been to his apartment. He's trying not to look afraid, because that would be incriminating. Yet, he is. Okay, okay, I admit it. I threw the mug away in the trash container behind the hostel. I know I shouldn't have, and I am very sorry, officer. You're not going to find me, are you? Whew. Thank you. You won't regret this. I won't use another man's property to dump my garbage ever again. I don't know what got into me, really. Work has been stressful lately. Damn Koiko's price dumping us out of competition. What did you do, Gary? Nothing. Nothing. Just answering some questions. Helping out the law. Here we go. Start pumping that sweet info. I know a guy who works with the trash collection services, CS Municipal. He gave me a master key for the trash containers of Martinez. So I can use the Whirling's trash compactor to store my own stuff. Garbage disposal is expensive as hell. The damn Chimians run it like a mob. I'm sorry, okay? I thought I could cut costs. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have disgraced myself. Disgraced? No need for the histrionic, sir. It was, after all, just a trash container. 
He studies his reaction. Gary doesn't answer. Officer, please. Let me explain. It's not like that. I was only cleaning up. I live right across the yard from where he was hanged, and I saw him stripped naked. All the clothes lying around in the yard, smelling. People are animals, you know? Then I came out to clean up the rags, because no one else would. I put them into the whirling's trash, along with a broken mug, admittedly. Okay. I was coming to throw the mug away, and, well, I threw the mug there and the clothes too. Right. It was just civic duty. Exactly. That's exactly what it was. Civic duty. As he shifts uncomfortably, a series of clicks, like the clinking of glass beads, against one another as they roll across a hardwood floor. You've heard this sound before, but where? What sound? Really? There's lots of weird stuff out here in the reeds, though. Insects, trash, could be the wind shifting some garbage nearby. Every day, the wind shifts the reeds and whatever was left in them. Tambourines and condom wrappers, plastic and glass bottles, the smell of decay. The sound you heard was not the sound of something easily abandoned. Armor? No. I, I mean, yes, of course. I know he was wearing armor, but I don't know anything about it. An infant could see he's not telling the truth but he's too scared to admit more wrongdoing. There's something going on here. You should observe it more closely after this topic is concluded. I hope I can help your investigation in my small way. Don't be so relieved yet, Gary. This bad cop may have been in your apartment admiring your mug collection. Perhaps a little intimidation? I told you everything I know, sir. I'm truly sorry for the mug, but I have nothing to do with that. He's not feeling too comfortable in his own skin. Odd, I'd say. Uncomfortable shifting around doesn't make him the killer, though. It's something else. No, no. I help Morel with research sometimes, and I've learned some things along the way. But I don't usually go in for picnics like this on my own. After all this time with Morel, he must have an opinion on cryptids. This could lead to a good one. Oh, yes. The burning rhino. Morel doubts he's real, but I don't much care. Because I won't be the one looking for him out in Safra Serai. A rhinoceros that looks ordinary during the day, but burns brightly by night. Well... At least the males do. They have special ducts just above their shoulder blades that secrete a combustible fluid. When the rhino is just beginning to light itself, it looks as though it has wings of fire. But how is this combustible fluid lit? The rhino starts running very fast to build heat, then stops, raises its head, and sparks fly from its neck, setting its back ablaze. Rivercall used to be a flaming rhino once, a long time ago. The flames are not just for decoration. They are an integral part of the beast's mating behavior. During the burning rhino's mating season, Herds of male rhinos, all aflame, encircle herds of female rhinos, forming a fiery ring as they begin to copulate loudly. 
Local peasants call it the Passion Ring. They fear the rhinos, as perhaps they should. Anyway. The lieutenant sighs without looking up from his notes. It's clear the burning rhino is dear to him on many levels, some even spiritual. Sure do, officer. His eyes narrow slightly. He's wondering where this is going. Mr. Everard? So you work for Everard Clare? Officer, please tell him we're good. No, no, tell him I'll make it up to him. What have I done? He'll send the muscle after me. As he lowers his tone, he hunches his back. What could it be about? I probably talked too loud. In the whirling. About some theories I had. Whatever it is, I'm done with it. I won't do it again. If there's anything I can do to assist you, or the Union, just ask, okay? I'll try to help if I can. This scared him proper. He's positively melting from fear. Has to prop himself up with a lot of anger to keep it together. The weather vein has turned. He cannot be unturned. He clearly liked his squirming. He may even have changed his mind about the whole door opening operation. That shirt looks very uncomfortable on him. Look at the buttons, barely keeping that thing together as if something is ready to rip out from underneath. No, he's scrawny. Try again. Yes, like a piece of ceramic armor, for example. One that makes a clicking sound when the plates meet each other, resembling pearls or marbles, stolen from the corpse in the yard near where he lives. I knew you'd figure it out, officer. I'm sorry I didn't tell you at once. I was... I was ashamed of what I did, and I didn't want you to know. We're not detecting falsehoods, sire. He's gearing up to admit the truth. This shame is surprisingly sincere. Gary, what's going on? Later, Morale. I've got apologizing to do. No, you've got explaining to do. He sighs again, hangs his head, and unbuttons his shirt fully. A cuirass that matches the dead man's boots comes into view. Soon it is in your hands, smelling of his sweat. But so, so light to hold like a bag of cotton. This is it. This will protect your mortal shell. Don it and live. Everyone was picking those pieces off him and I was watching them do it. And they'd scattered his clothes all over the yard. Everything was smelling. So I went there to take out the trash and started cleaning up. All those rags on the ground him swinging up there and I had a lapse of honor sir I thought he's a foreigner they all say he wasn't from here only the caress was left so I stripped it off him it was early in the morning no one saw me I took it with me 
It was a mistake. Had I known it'd give you guys trouble, I... I wouldn't have... Fuck. We're detecting sincere contrition here, sire. He's not trying to flatter anyone. It's okay. It was a loose end, and you are tying it up now. I'm so fucking sorry I called you Yellow Man. Sealite officers commanded the Suzerain's navy. Most of them sided with the king when... They were thoroughly conservative men, he realizes suddenly. It's difficult to say what the lieutenant thinks of this historic apology. His face does not belie emotions. Because I was weak. I should have told you the moment I saw you, but... The hell, Gary? You in trouble? I'll explain later. I always thought it was the Union, but I sure as hell won't go around saying that anymore. You have my word. I don't know, and I won't be running my mouth on this subject anymore. This is all he knows. Yes, absolutely. I will never do anything like this again. I, I won't mess with Mr. Clare either. You have my word. 